Hello, good evening. This is the All 24 News. I'm coming up next. Western Sahara dilemma is to be discussed as a top priority by all countries around the world. After a decade of instability and newly election in Libya, we resolved the situation with the former leader Gaddafi's son's participation. Iran and Turkey hope to sign cooperation roadmap. Nerdogan visit. The Algerian national team football coach Jamal Belmadi emphasized on taking it all from the opponent Burkina Faso. First in our top stories, lots of countries around the world are putting Western Sahara issue on the top of their agendas. Left groups in the European Parliament issued the report on European companies active Western Sahara, while Algeria and South Africa issued the joint statement to support the Sahrawi cause. Usama Ayadi reports. A report has been released by the left group of the European Union on the foreign companies active in Western Sahara's territories. The report was dedicated to the violation of international laws of these companies in Western Sahara and considered their acts as war crimes as they illegally exploit the natural resources of the country. Most of the companies in Western Sahara are French, Spanish and German and their activities are mostly centered on the most important sectors of the Saharan economy including renewable energy, agriculture and marine resources. On the African level, Algeria and South Africa have issued a joint statement on Western Sahara cause. Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ramtan Lamamra and South African Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Nali Dipandor, called for coordination between the African Union and the UN envoy in order to work on the support of the independence of the last colony in the African continent. This comes during the escalated raw and military confrontations between the Sahrawi forces and Moroccan forces and repeated clashes between the two countries' armies. Vows by the Sahrawi president were clear against the Moroccan army as he stressed that his army is well trained and fully operational and will not cease until they free their territories from Moroccan occupation. To Libya, where an official from the Electoral Commission declared that Saif al Islam al Qaddafi, son of Libya's former leader Muammar al Qaddafi, has registered as a presidential candidate for the country's December election. Marwa, in this report. A statement said by an official from the Electoral Commission, Saif al Islam al Qaddafi submitted his candidacy for the presidential election to the High National Electoral Commission office in the southern city of Sabha. A footage of Gaddafi's son virally shared on social media portrays him with a grey beard, glasses, a traditional brown robe and a turban, signing documents at the registration office in the southern town of Sebha. Educated at the London School of Economics and a fluent English speaker, Saif al-Islam Gaddafi was once seen by many governments as the acceptable, western-friendly face of Libya and a possible heir seemingly. But when the uprising broke out in 2011 against Muammar Gaddafi's long rule, Saif al-Islam immediately chose family and clan loyalties over his many friendships in the West, telling news agencies, quote, we fight here in Libya, we die here in Libya, end quote. Despite the public backing of most Libyan factions and foreign powers for elections on December 24th, the vote is still in doubt as revile entities dispute over the rules and schedule. A major conference in Paris agreed to sanction those who disrupt or prevent the vote, but there is still no agreement on rules to govern who should be able to run. The elections are predicted as a key moment in a United Nations-backed peace process to end a decade violent chaos that has drawn in regional powers since the 2011 NATO-backed uprising against Muammar Gaddafi. The head of the Libyan Presidential Council, Mohammed al manfi told Reuters that there are serious steps being taken in Libya towards a settlement regarding the election schedule for the next December. Let's have a listen. We must be optimistic and think that the elections will be on time with the agreement of Libyans. That is an important matter. 
The truth is, regarding the possibility of there not being consensus, we are currently making sure there is consensus about having elections on time. It is expected that the European Union foreign ministers will meet today with the aim of, of expanding the sanctions imposed on Belarus against the backdrop of the refugee crisis on its borders with Poland, while the Vice President of the European Commission will visit Baghdad to discuss migrant crisis. Zahra Al-Frajani reports. An expected meeting of the European Union foreign ministers today aims to expand the sanctions imposed on Belarus due to the abuses approved by President Lukashenko regarding the crisis of asylum seekers on its borders with Poland. It is expected to coincide with the visit of the European Commission's vice president to Baghdad to discuss the migrants' crisis. A crisis was at the center of the talks of the European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, with Belarusian foreign minister, Vladimir Mackay, which Borrell confirmed in a tweet in which he indicated that the current situation of refugees on the border between Belarus and Poland is unacceptable and must end. While international human rights voices reject the use of people as weapons, Germany has deployed additional forces along its borders due to the entry of more than 700 refugees who came through the territory of Belarus since the beginning of this month. The United States, through its Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, renewed its position in support of Poland in the face of what he called the absurd exploitation of migrants, while emphasizing that Washington, Warsaw and the Allies agree that Moscow will pay what they described as a heavy price for its military aggression and malign activities in the region. More than 4,500 asylum seekers are still moving from one place to another through the border forests between Poland and Belarus in search of an exit to reach Europe to escape their difficult living conditions. As for Poland, it confirmed that a group of 50 refugees had crossed the Polish border and that the police were constantly searching for them. The Iraqi Minister of Foreign Affairs Fuad Hussein announced the launching of the first exceptional flight Voluntary return migrants stuck at the Belarusian Polish border on the 18th of the current month. This comes after thousands of illegal immigrants attempt to cross the, Pol the Polish Belarus borders. More insight in this report. The Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs revealed that the first return flight for Iraqi migrants from Belarus is scheduled on the 18th of this month. Ministry spokesman Ahmed Sahaf said in a press statement that Iraq will organize a trip for those wishing to return voluntarily on the 18th of this month and emphasized that the Iraqi government supports the return of migrants. The decision has been taken according to the development in the migrant crisis. It's reported that the crisis has taken on a political turn and their illegal granting of entry visa to Belarus, which exposes Iraqi fragile groups to the danger of human trafficking networks. The Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs worked to devote the voluntary return of Iraqi immigrants, and there are political and diplomatic dialogues now taking place with Iraq's partners and friends in the European Union. We are coordinating nationally with the Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of Migration and Displacement to support the voluntary return by urgently conducting emergency evacuation flights. The Polish-Belarus border witnessed tension recently after thousands of illegal immigrants attempted to cross it toward Poland. As an attempt to protect the Iraqi citizens from human trafficking networks through Belarus and Poland, the Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs has temporarily withdrawn the work permit of the Belarusian Honorary Consul in Baghdad. Iran announced that it had agreed with Turkey to develop a roadmap for long-term cooperation between the two countries. This came in a statement by the Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdul Hayyan during a joint press conference with the Turkish counterpart Mawlud Jawish Orlu. More to be clarified, Hussein reports. Foreign Minister Molo Jewish Oglu stated that Turkey and Iran are committed to regional and global cooperation during a joint press conference with his Iranian counterpart Hussein Amir Abdullahian in Tehran. They agreed to develop a new roadmap for long-term cooperation between Tehran and Ankara and to start diplomatic talks in a future visit by Mr. Rajab Tayyip Erdogan. They highlighted the importance of joint investment between Iran and Turkey developing economic relations and consular issues, 
removing trade obstacles between the two parties, and facilitating trade and transit. The two ministers also touch on regional issues, such as the situation in Afghanistan, and agree to enhance stability in West Asia. Turkey foreign ministers emphasized on Iran's 2015 nuclear deal with the world powers, saying that Turkey welcomes the fact that participants will head to Vienna in November 29 to resume talks aimed at restoring it. It is worth mentioning that Iranian Foreign Minister Spokesperson Saeed Khatib Zadeh said that there is no development in the talks with Saudi Arabia and that they are waiting to see if they have the will for dialogue. Taliban launched an assault on Monday, November 15th against several suspected headouts of local branches of ISIS in Kandahar province in southern Afghanistan. More in this report by Melissa Nour. Taliban Provincial Police Chief Abdul Ghaffar Mohammadi told a news agency that this operation against the terrorist state Khorasan was launched around midnight in four districts of the province and continued into the morning. He asserted, so far four Daesh fighters have been killed and ten arrested. One of them blew himself up inside a house. A member of the Taliban intelligence service who requested anonymity said that at least three civilians were killed. Since their return to power in Kabul on August 15th, the Taliban, which has made security their priority after decades of war, have faced a wave of attacks led by ISK. This group is particularly active around the city of Jalalabad, one of its long-standing strongholds where it has already targeted the Taliban on several occasions. It also targeted the Shiite minority in Kunduz, Kabul and in the city of Kandahar, where an attack on one of its mosques in mid-October left at least 60 dead. ISK, which had been severely weakened in 2019 by operations by the Afghan army, assisted by the United States and by its rivalry with the Taliban, has regained new impetus with the latter's return to power. ISIS constitutes the main threat to the Taliban power, even if it tends to minimize its influence. John Cyrenik Carter, the head of the UK Armed Forces, says that Russia has become a bigger threat in Eastern Europe, but he doesn't think it wants a hot war. He also told local media that the country's military will have to be ready for war with Russia, even though he distinctly hoped there would not be any war. Mawa reports. Tensions have been mounting in Eastern Europe in recent weeks after the European Union accused Belarus of flying in thousands of migrants to engineer a humanitarian crisis on its border with the European Union, member state Poland, a dispute that threatens to draw in Russia and NATO. Shedding light on the standoff between Poland, Belarus and the role of Russia in massing troops along the border with Ukraine, General Carter also highlighted that NATO must be ready even though he did not believe Russian President Vladimir Putin might want to engage in hot war with the West. I mean, I think if you look at the two things together, um, trouble up northwest, as it were, and then trouble around Ukraine, it's a classic example of a bit of distraction perhaps going on. Uh, and if you look at the Russian playbook over the years, the idea of Maskarovka, as they call it, um, this sort of theatre that they apply to it, it's pretty typical. It's some stuff that's been going on for years. The backdrop to his comments is the tension between Poland and Belarus, backed by Russia, due to large groups of migrants amassed at the border between the two countries. Russian troops are also thought to be massing at its border with Ukraine. Britain has sent a small military deployment to see if it could assist Poland. The sort of um, hybrid playbook where you link disinformation to destabilization and the idea of pushing migrants onto the European Union's borders is a classic example of that sort of thing. British Typhoon fighters also accompany two Russian military aircraft out of its area of interest, working with NATO partners to monitor the jets as they pass through international airspace. Moving on now to another story where three men have been put under arrest after a man was killed in a car explosion outside Liverpool's women's hospital. The passenger was declared dead at the scene and another was injured. Let's follow this report. A car explosion killed one person and left another injured near Liverpool Women's Hospital. The male passenger of the car was declared dead at the scene and is yet to be formally identified. The driver, also a man, remains in hospital in a stable condition. 
Authorities are keeping an open mind and counter-terror officers are leading the investigation to understand the circumstances of the explosion in a city that hasn't witnessed such incidents for decades. We are keeping an open mind as to what caused the explosion, but given how it has happened and out of caution, counter-terrorism police are leading the investigation supported by Merseyside Police. In a tweet released through Greater Manchester Police, Merseyside Police said three men aged 29, 26 and 21 have been arrested in the Kensington area of Liverpool under the Terrorism Act. Police continues the investigation. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, said his thoughts are with those affected by the awful incident and thanked the emergency services for their response. The taxi carrying the two victims pulled up just before 11 a.m. at local time as a national two-minute silence for Remembrance Sunday was about to begin and it exploded. It is not yet known if there is a connection between the timing of the incident and the fact it occurred on Remembrance Sunday. Several European countries opt for a new partial lockdown of the winter. The stop comes after the continent has become the epicenter of the pandemic for the second time. Nabil report. Europe has again become the center of the pandemic as governments struggle to contain record coronavirus cases. The current situation prompts some European governments to consider reimposing a partial lockdown on unvaccinated citizens. In the Netherlands, the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte announced at least three weeks of partial lockdown measures targeting restaurants, shops and sports events, making the Netherlands Western Europe's first country since the summer to take such decisions to curb a record spike in coronavirus infections. Tonight. We have a very unpleasant message. We concluded what we have talked about intensively over the past few days. It's just really complicated. It is inevitable that we will go back to measures that we knew from earlier phases. This affects us all, whether you are vaccinated or not. Denmark also reintroduced its COVID-19 health pass on Friday, citing the rise in cases. A green pass will be needed to enter certain venues or events and shows of proof of vaccination, a recent negative test or a recovery from coronavirus. Austria's government has imposed a new nationwide lockdown on people not fully vaccinated against the coronavirus or recently recovered from the disease. Unvaccinated people will only be allowed to leave homes for essential reasons such as working, shopping or taking a walk. As of tomorrow, every citizen, every person living in Austria must be aware that they can be checked by the police at any time. We will check if people have been checked, if people have been vaccinated or recovered and the reason for entering public spaces. Germany and France are also experiencing a surge in infections, showing the challenge for government to tame the pandemic. Germany would also allow for measures such as compulsory face masks and social distancing in public spaces to continue to be enforced until next March. Europe is facing a sharp deterioration in the pandemic situation, especially in Germany and Central and Eastern Europe. Non-vaccinated people are the most affected. The World Health Organization warned Europe was once again at the epicenter of the pandemic. Cases and deaths have been raising there even as they largely fell around the world. Joe Biden and Jinping, the leaders of two big powers in the world, are to meet virtually on Monday. Many files are to be opened and discussed to find radical solutions to the world's current problems. Osama, on what follow? A virtual meeting between the leaders of the two world polls, Joe Biden and Xi Jinping, will take place on Monday. The summit will discuss different files in the world amid all the crises that gather the two countries, including trade, climate crisis, human rights and Taiwan issue. U.S. officials believe Biden's engagement with Xi would prevent the two biggest economies from direct dispute amid the tension which has risen after China's nuclear expanding arsenal and COVID-19 originated issues. As for Beijing, keeping positive competition and avoiding direct conflict is a priority. The last discussion between the leaders of the two powers took place on September for around 90 minutes. 
U.S. official informed that climate change, COVID-19 pandemic and economic issues were the discussed files. China's top diplomat Yang Jiechi and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan agreed officially on the virtual meeting during talks in Zurich. The White House considered the summit as a continuity of U.S. efforts to well manage the competition between these large poles. Some experts showed fears about the meeting, explaining that one day is not sufficient to find clues for all the issues on board, and both leaders and countries should show cooperation. Algeria entered the Dubai Expo 2020 with a unique presence different from previous exhibition, the largest in the history of its participation in international ex exhibitions. The Algeria Pavia is a new platform for promoting the country's image and for incentive its offer to foreign investors. Zara Forjani in this report. With a pavilion that mixes both tradition and modernity, Algeria records its largest participation in the biggest economic event, Dubai Expo 2020. Algeria's heritage identity is prepared in all its details, just as the pavilion seeks to fuse the past with the future. Algeria is like a beautiful, beautiful country. Yes, you have, you have rich culture, you have this, like what are these carpets and all this? Are these your traditional dresses? Yes. It's, it looks glamorous, by the way. And also those, what are these? What do you call this one? Like, it's antiques. A unique mixture that shows visitors the depth of Algerian history and the aspirations for a promising future in an exceptional trip that impresses many visitors to the Dubai Expo 2020. Algeria is famous for its dates and its large desert. We have studied the history of Algeria in Iraq since childhood. A journey through history showcases Algerian traditional heritage, well-preserved and rooted in these skilled handicrafts that have attracted many interested and curious visitors. When you enter, the Algerians show you the numerous and diverse civilizations that exist in Algeria, as well as the distinguished history. For the first time in the history of its participation in such a major international exhibition, Algeria marks a distinguished presence at Expo 2020, which is an exceptional opportunity to return to the most prominent international economic forum after COVID-19 pandemic that has strongly hit the world's economy. And in sport now, during the press conference at Sidi Moussa National Technical Center, on the occasion of tomorrow's algeria Burkina Faso game for the World Cup qualifying, the Algerian national football team coach Jamal Balmadi spoke about the coming World Cup in Qatar and he emphasized on the idea that against teams like Burkina Faso, our tactical guidelines are different. Their philosophy is not the same. Every match has its truth and their match against Niger has been studied, of course, but their match against us will be completely different. Let's hear it. The Burkina Faso team has strategy of getting the ball out of behind. They have two distinctive style of playing, but we have spent time observing our opponent. Their philosophy is different from the previous opponent, and we are aware of how to engage in this football match. The team know the importance of this fixture. Well, Madi at the press conference, as always, he was furious and funny at the same time. When he was asked about the, the how Algerian team squad will start, he preferred to answer as follows. Let's have a listen. It is you who are trying at all costs to know our composition of tomorrow, while you know that Kamu Malou is listening to us. Do you want the composition of Burkina? Let's go. Normally, it's Kofi in the cages. Kabori will play right back. Dayu and uh, Tapsuba in the center. Yago left back. It will be three-way environment, either in 1-2 or 2-1, with Gira, Dabu, and Sangari. On the right, there is the choice between Sanogu and Bayala, and on the left, it will be Bandi, and up front isn't clear yet. For them, they know that Mahrez is going to play, but the rest, I'm not sure whether they know or not. And in his final words, Balmadi has mentioned some statistics that concern the Algerian national team. Let's hear it. The statistics are interesting. Well, some say that this group doesn't evolve and it doesn't change. 
easier said than done. They think that Mahrez is always present. And perhaps this should change. And Smail bin Nasser is still present as well. And this should change. These are the statistics. I ignore the exact figure, but I'm studying this regarding all teams closely. Sports all with Spain, Serbia and Croatia are heading to the next year's World Cup, while Sweden, Portugal and Russia aren't not yet in the support will be more classified. The Portuguese capital last night witnessed a dramatic show with a shocking ending that could cause a heart attack to stand over the stadium. Portugal was in a strong position when Renato Sanchez scored the opening goal after just two minutes against Serbia, but Dusan Tatic kept Serbia in the game with an equalizer in the 33rd minute. But at the closer point, Alexander Mitrovic's 19th minute header left Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal stand in a 2-1 win for Serbia in Lisbon, which gave Serbia an automatic qualifying spot at the World Cup in Qatar. Portugal still has a chance to qualify, but it must navigate a four-team bracket in the playoffs in March. All of the teams which booked a World Cup place in Europe on Sunday did so with dramatic late goals. Spain only needed a draw in its last game against Sweden to qualify, but Alvaro Morata made sure in the 86th minute with the only goal in a 1-0 win. To leave Sweden stars Latan Ibrahimovic hopes of another World Cup appearance depending on the playoffs. Croatia led siege to Russia's goal in a waterlogged field quickly turning into a swamp and was finally rewarded when a Russian defender scored an 81st minute own goal, enough for a 1-0 win. Russia too heads to the playoffs, which start March 24th and will soar 12 teams. For well, now, that's all the fresh we have got. And now, let's have a reminder for our main top stories. The Western Sahara Dilemma is to be discussed as a top priority by all countries around the world. After a decade of instability in your election in Libya, to resolve the situation with the former leaders Gaddafi's son's participation, Iran and Turkey help to sign cooperation roadmap in Erdogan visit. The Algerian national team coach Jamal Belmadi emphasized on taking it all from his opponent Burkina Faso. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. Take care of yourself. Peace.